Thanks for attending this talk. Today, I'm going to talk about how we use Presto and uh, Apache Pino to do real-time analytics. A brief introduction for me, I'm Xiang Fu, right now working on engineering stuff at a sales mode startup. Uh, before my current journey, I worked at Uber uh, in streaming platform team, mostly on the data serving, processing, as well as analytics work. Uh, for my open source contribution, uh, I'm a P PMC and the committer of Apache Pino project. And of course, I'm a contributor for Presto project. In today's agenda, I'm going to first talk about how we do a real-time analysis today and uh, what has been compromised for query latency as well as query flexibility. Then I'll introduce Apache Pino to solve the low latency query problem. And after that, I will um, introduce how we use Press and Pino connector to cover the entire landscape. Lastly, I will show some perf benchmark numbers uh, for our findings. So let's take a look at how we do analysis uh, today. So first of all, uh, on our data sources like OLTP or like uh, uh, key value store on our events, are going through uh, Kafka, they all land into data lake. So from the data lake, we can use all the raw data and uh, we'll be able to use uh, processing framework like Apache Spark or Presto to compute. In this case, the user have all the full flexibility to access all the data, pick whatever they want and apply whatever computations that they need. However, it takes a long time to retrieve the results. And then the commutation are mostly like launched on demand. So we can take a concrete example. Assume that uh, this is an e-commerce business and uh, we have a dimension table called the customers and uh, a fact table called the orders. In this case, if we want to generate a monthly sales report for all the female customers in California, then from the raw data side, we need to write a SQL to join two tables and then aggregate the results, right? So in this case, uh, the query execution has four phases. First, uh, the table scan phase, which scans all the data from both tables, one full table scan on the orders, and another full table scan on a uh, customer's table. Meanwhile, to perform the uh, predicate for the customer states, equals California and uh, gender equals female. After that, we will do a join to shuffle the data from both table uh, based on the customer ID so that we can join these two tables. And after that, we will do a group by phase, which will again shuffle the data based on months of the order state as well as the customer's city. Once the group by is done, we need to perform the aggregation, which is the sum on those orders amount. And uh, then we will render the final uh, results. The, uh, the advantage of this solution is that it's flexible to do any computation. And uh, the disadvantage here is the, the high query cost, which means we have a lot of disk and network IO. We need to uh, spend the CPU cycle on data partitioning and the data serialization and the deserializations. To optimize this query performance, ETL comes to the picture. In ETL jobs, users can pre-join a factor table with a dimension table and then query it on this pre-join table. So take the same example, we will uh, pre-join this customers and the orders table to be uh, based on the customer ID, then we have a pre-join the table and we can translate the previous query into this one. So we can just work on a flatten the table and we perform the filter on a city across California and gender equals female. And then we do group by and the sum. So in this example, uh, the join the table size is the same as the old uh, orders table. However, we have more uh, dimension data to be decorated into this uh, pre-joined table. The benefit is that it's still very flexible to explore user dimensions in this uh, uh, user orders join the table. 
However, the disadvantage here is that the query time is still proportional to the data scan, which means that we cannot really predict how long this query will be run. A noticeable improvement from the above approach is to pre-aggregate the results we want to query. For example, we can create a new table called user orders aggregate. What it's doing is it will just uh, group by all the date and the city and the compute this sum of the uh, cells into this pre-aggregated table. So this table will significantly reduce the total number of the records because the total number of records is uh, proportional to the uh, unique combinations of date and the city. In this case, we can rewrite the query into this format, which means that we still need to do some filtering and it's similar we to group by and we do some. However, because uh, uh, the total number of records are much smaller, so the total effort of computation is much smaller than the previous uh, pre-joined table. The good thing here is that uh, we have reduced the query runtime workload a lot and we achieved the better query latency. The downside here is that uh, the query time is still proportional to the multiplication of non group by columns and it's still kind of not really uh, predictable. Precubing is a solution to achieve constant query latency. Users can pre-compute all the metrics they are interested in and uh, based on all the dimension combinations. So for any query, it will always be an extract row to answer it. For example, we will just uh, do a uh, group by all the uh, dimension combinations and uh, generate this uh, user orders cubed table. And for the above query, we will just uh, do a filtering and a projection. It will uh, extract uh, all the results we want. The, the advantage here is that uh, the query runtime latency is very predictable because it's just the raw record fetch. Uh, however, the downside here is that uh, we have extra storage overhead. One raw record will be translated into like many uh, records. And uh, apart from that, we have the problem of dimension explosion, which means that if we want to add a new dimension, new column into this uh, cubed table, the total data volume uh, could be uh, multiplied by uh, the cardinality of this new column added. Okay, now let's take a step back to take a look at uh, uh, how this landscape looks like. We have on the left side, we will have this uh, fact table and the dimension table. For any kind of computations, we will have a high latency, uh, but we have good uh, flexibility. And of course, uh, the query source code will definitely be low in this case. And we will have a very good solution here called Presto to solve this problem. And on the right side, if you want to achieve a better latency and a better source code, we need to do like pre-drawing or pre-aggregation or pre-cube of the data set. And hence we can use Apache Pino, which is a good engine for all those kind of use cases. On a very high level view of Apache Pino, it's an OLAP desktop. It's built from LinkedIn for low latency analytics majorly. So Pino has been widely adopted in user facing uh, applications, uh, business analytics, as well as anomaly detection use cases from more than 35 companies like Uber, uh, LinkedIn, uh, Weibo, or Microsoft, uh, Confluera. So when I say uh, this low latency, it includes both low ingestion latency as well as uh, low query latency. So this means the Pino can directly ingest the data from uh, Kafka or Kinesis, and uh, those events will be queryable immediately. Apart from Kafka, User can also batch load the data using Hadoop or Spark drops from blob store like HDFS or S3 uh, or Shure Data Lake. So in our production environment, Pino handles the workload of ingesting millions of events per second and uh, serving thousands of queries per second with millisecond level of query latency. And our largest uh, deployment in Pino is about a thousand node with uh, uh, only one or two SREs to operate that. Okay, now let's try to uh, ex expand this Pino box. Pino has three major components. So all the Pino data are stored in Pino servers. 
from both uh, real-time data consumed from Kafka and the batch loaded data from like HDFS or S3. And then we have Pino controller, which is responsible for all the cluster and the data management. For example, the data assignment or the partition assignment and all the Pino queries are goes to Pino broker, which will maintain uh, multiple routing tables and based on the query, uh, broker will be smart enough to choose the best strategy to do the scat gather for the query results from a selected uh, Pino servers. The secret behind the Pino to optimize the query performance across all the layers from storage to a uh, query. So from the storage layer, Pino implements its own column format along with uh, compression and uh, different encoding algorithms like uh, run length encoding, uh, bit and bytes dictionary. Uh, for the query processing layer, Pino has implemented multiple index technologies like invert index, room filter, sorted index, starter index to speed up all the queries. And for the aggregation layer, Pino has starter index to do all the pre-aggregate. Uh, pre and uh, uh, also this pre-aggregation is in a very cost-effective manner. Startry provides a way to do partial pre-computation for aggregation results. For example, we can just pre-aggregate metrics contain uh, more than a threshold of 1,000 orders in all the dimension combinations. Then in the case of like, we want to understand uh, uh, all the customers in the United States. We want to know uh, all the female customers in Los Angeles. For all those cell stats, we will do pre-aggregation. But probably in some rural area uh, for a particular zip code, then we, we, we want to do pre-aggregate, pre-computation for those kind of uh, zip code. This means that uh, we can ensure that for any query, we will scan no more than 1,000 records in order to answer this question. So it can handle way more query throughput comparing to the normal inverting index. The needs of accelerating Presto query uh, speed and uh, support more functionalities from like Pino queries are a perfect match here. So we developed a Presto and a Pino connector which can cover the entire uh, landscape of analytics from like the BI visualization or like data products or normally detection use cases and uh, as well as this ad hoc analysis. Since we want to uh, leverage fast query from Pino, we implemented this aggregation pushdown feature. So this will allow Presto to do a best effort pushdown for aggregation functions that Pino can support, for example, like a count sum, min max, uh, distinct count, or like approximate count. So from our benchmark, we observed about 10 to 100 times latency improvement. Here, I will go over how we do it as example. For example, user will send an aggregation group by query by saying uh, select a sum with some uh, filter and the group by. So press the coordinator takes this query, we generate a query plan and figuring out that, oh, I can do uh, aggregation push down for this uh, query. So the Presto worker will uh, generate a, a Pino query and send it to Pino broker. Pino broker will figuring out, okay, this is a valid uh, Pino query and it will query Pino server, get the results. And the uh, Pino broker will uh, reduce the results and uh, return it back to uh, press the worker as a whole. So it means that uh, the press worker will just uh, get the results of uh, the group and uh, the aggregated value. And the press the worker actually gets a much, uh, much smaller and computed results from Pino. So it reduced uh, a lot of workload from the press the worker side Although we want to like uh, do the push down computation as much as possible. So there are still some uh, certain cases that uh, there's no way to really push down. For example, if I want to join a Pino table with another data source and uh, then I will do the aggregation 
on some uh, dimensions from the other tables, right? So in this case, so we need to uh, actually pull all the data from Pino and uh, do the uh, drawing in Presto and then do aggregation in Presto. So in this case, so we basically assume that uh, there, there will be no aggregation push down. So uh, what we are going to do here is that the Presto worker will actually directly contacting each Pino server and only send the query like select non-aggregation fields from this table along with some predicate. Uh, also, it's like a best effort uh, predicate push down. So it will ensure Presto worker will only, uh, uh, only extract those uh, records they are interested. So from, so from this way, uh, we basically implemented a, a gRPC server uh, in Pino server, which means that uh, we can have a configurable uh, memory footprint for, from Pino side to do the data pooling. And it's also a perfect match for the uh, Presto side. Basically, we can fetch uh, data pages by pages. It's also in a streaming fashion. So here comes to the benchmark. So for the benchmark, it's uh, all set up on AWS with uh, Kubernetes. We started with uh, three Pino uh, controllers, five brokers, four servers, uh, one Presto coordinate, and four uh, Presto workers. The data set is uh, one billion uh, random generated uh, complex website. It has some uh, high cardinality dimension, low cardinality dimensions, and some metrics. Uh, for the queries, we are majorly testing on aggregation uh, plus predicate and aggregation group by plus predicate. So from the Presto side, we basically do this aggregation push down, enable and disable uh, conditions so that uh, we can compare uh, how this aggregation push down actually working and help the performance improvement. So for this test, uh, it's based on the aggregation plus predicate push down. So we tested the performance uh, of with and without uh, uh, aggregation pushdown. So blue bar is uh, with aggregation pushdown. So you will find that most of the query latency are contributed from the Pino query engine. Uh, the red bar is Presto. So although we a uh, hundred times this uh, number of records scan, uh, but the query uh, latency didn't go like too 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 high. So it means that uh, the query engine overhead is a major contribution. Uh, for this thing. And apparently, uh, Pino is more lightweight. The, the right side of the latency graph is for low select, uh, selectivity uh, predicates. So query need to scan more data, and the latency is uh, proportional to the number of records scanned. So for large data scan, Presto require, requires uh, fetching all the data needed from Pino to process. So the actual cost and the time consumption are on the Pino data serialization, network transfer, and the Presto data deserialization. So this is the benchmark for aggregation uh, group by queries. And uh, this results is similar to the previous one. So just uh, to uh, comparing to Presto, for scanning large amount of data, Pino latency increase are in a lower ratio from like uh, uh, 50 million to 500 million uh, number of docs scanned, Pino latency increase about uh, two times, and the Presto increase about uh, six times. So overall, uh, in this kind of uh, aggregation push down, it, uh, it opens up the gate for analytics and uh, also fully allows our user to enjoy the serial time analytics with a flexible query capability. Okay, lastly, so first of all, thanks for attending uh, this talk. And uh, you can try to uh, get started with Presto and uh, Pino uh, by following this uh, Get Started tutorial. And uh, also, please join our Pino Slack channel if you have any questions. Or you can just uh, uh, subscribe to our Twitter or uh, join our Meetup uh, for any like news update or like uh, learning sessions. And all feedbacks and contributions are welcome. Uh, that's pretty much the talk for today. Thanks for your attending.